How's it going, everybody? You found messy, unkempt, ungelled haired Nintunist, and welcome to another top 10 list. In the last top 10 list, we talked about the top 10 best overall Super Smash Brothers characters that you should use if you want to one day become one of the best Smashers in the world. And today, we're going to talk about the worst. That's right, these are the top 10 characters that you should pretty much never play unless you want to get completely bodied or you have so much character pride that you don't care about getting bodied anymore. And with that said, let's head right into the list. Mr. Game & Watch The final unlockable character in Melee and one of the most unique characters in all of Smash Brothers. This character takes the 10th spot on the list because despite his shortcomings, the character actually has some pretty good tools. His neutral air is a powerful combo finisher and a solid kill option, his down air is a pretty strong move, and he has a move that can potentially kill at 0%. So now you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with him? He's flat out broken, that's what! And not even in the good kind! In Melee, there is a tech called L cancelling, or lag cancelling, which is when you press L, R, or Z when landing on the ground with an aerial to cut the landing lag of the move in half. This tech is very important and is a crucial part of the current metagame of Melee because every character has the ability to L cancel. Except for Mr. Game & Watch. You can L cancel his forward air and his down air, but not his up air, back air, or his neutral air. This makes these moves way less practical to use. Game & Watch not only suffers from these inane problems, but the character also cannot shield. Well, I mean, he can, but like, it sucks. His shield is terrible. It quite literally does not cover his entire body, even after slight damage, rendering it almost totally useless, especially against characters like Marth. And like I said before, Game & Watch himself, honestly, isn't even that bad of a character. He has a lot of great moves, he has a decent combo game, he has Judgment, which is a really crazy move. Him, him as a character, honestly, isn't that bad. But the fact that he just has, like, these inane problems, like, not being able to L-cancel all of his moves, or, like, a shield not covering his entire body, is just what adds up to making him a bad character. It's just these basic attributes that every other character has that Game & Watch doesn't that sets him so far back. I personally think if Game & Watch didn't have these problems, I think he would be a high tier character. This led some fans to speculate that Game & Watch was a last minute addition, and that because of him being a last minute addition, he was rushed as a character, which is why he has all these silly inane problems. But, at the end of the day, he still has all those stupid attributes. And combined with the fact that he's tied with Pichu for being the second lightest character in the entire game, ranks him at number 19 on the official Melee tier list. Pichu is currently ranked 24th on the official Melee tier list, the third worst character in the entire game. Pichu's reasoning for being bad, though, isn't because he's an incomplete character like Game & Watch is. Oh no no no. Quite the contrary. Melee has a lot of clone characters. Actually, the most clone characters out of any Smash game in the entire series. And Pichu, obviously, is a clone of Pikachu. But instead of being just a slightly altered version of the original character in question, Pichu was intentionally made worse by the developers. Yep, that's right. Pichu was literally designed to be a bad character. And how do they make him bad? Almost half of the character's moves hurts him. His forward smash, his forward air, his down air, his forward throw, his pummel, and all of his special moves cause damage to himself. It's counterintuitive. Like, it's literally counterintuitive to even play Pichu at all. The only feasible explanation I can possibly think of for somebody trying to play this character legitimately is if they're just trying to be a total douchebag to somebody. The only reason I even rank Pichu this low on the list is because of his neutral air, which is actually a pretty incredible move. Ah, Jigglypuff. You really need to take a bath, my friend, because Nintendo did you so dirty. Jigglypuff is one of the best characters in Melee, as Hungrybox won EVO this year, of course, using his main, Jigglypuff, and as a mid-tier character in Smash 64, but after that, kaput. She's one of the worst characters in Brawl, and is considered by some, although I don't agree with this personally, to be the worst character in Smash 4. Now, Puff's nerfs are a little more understandable. Her back air isn't unreasonably disjointed like it was in Melee, and it also isn't lagless, so you can't just spam it like you could in Melee, yet the move still retains its excellent kill power. Some other nerfs, however, are not so well deserved. 
Rest is an incredibly hard move to land. It has been in every single Smash game. The hitbox is incredibly minuscule, so it's hard to hit. In Melee, Jigglypuff has tech chase setups, sharking up airs, side beat arrest, and most notably, up throw to rest. In Smash 4, nothing. Jigs has barely any rest setups in this game, and the ones she does have are so tricky to execute and so unreliable that in almost every situation, it's not even worth it to go for them. These setups include air dodge to rest, which isn't a true combo, obviously, and late hit a fair to rest, which is incredibly risky. And you know what the magical part of all of that is? Rest barely kills. In melee, this move reliably killed at zero, which made sense considering how crazy hard it is to land. In Smash 4, however, it not only is harder to land a rest due to Jigglypuff having no setups that lead into it, but even if you land it, it might not kill. Check out this combo I got in my Jigglypuff montage. I landed that rest at almost 50% on a 4 glory Link who was not DIing at all. A move this hard to land should kill at decent percents! But much like Mario, Jigglypuff has either never or rarely been changed. There's literally a counter on the website that shows how many days there has not been a Jigglypuff change. That- this exists! This is a literal website that exists. You can go to it, you can look it up, and you can see how many days it's been since Jigglypuff has been buffed. I rank Puff at 8th, because despite all of these attributes, the character still has great horizontal combos such as the Wall of Pain using forward airs, fair comboing into dash attack, and Pound being a fantastic combo starter plus doing a number on shields. Zelda. One of the worst characters and who I personally think is the worst character in the entire game. Well, not really. I think the Mii Sword Fighter is the worst character in the entire game, but that character isn't exactly allowed. Regardless, Zelda really never had very much going for her in Smash. She's not one of the better characters in any Smash game she's in. Heck, she's never even been a mid-tier. Ironically, I think she's better in this game than the other Smash games she's in. Again, just in the official series though, because trust me, she can do things in PM. But in Smash 4, due to buffs, she now has a hoo-ha. Which, to any non-gaming women watching this is not a slang term for vagina, but rather a type of combo which consists of down throw to up air. A lot of good disjoints on moves such as up tilt, up smash, f tilt, and f smash, a great projectile game, and a kill confirm with grounded up B. However, compared to most of the rest of the cast in Smash 4, she's visibly weaker than the other characters despite her good traits, which is why she's on the list. In Melee, Roy was a complete clone of Marth. At least aesthetically. Every single one of his moves looked exactly the same. Every. Single. One. Roy, unlike Marth, does not do advanced damage and knockback from hitting with just the tip of his sword. Rather, Roy does the most damage from the exact opposite, the base of his sword. Unfortunately though, on a lot of Roy's attacks, you can call the base of his sword more of a knife or a dagger, because that's basically what it is. See, in Melee, Marth fights with a very long sword, and despite Roy's sword looking almost as long as Marth's, it actually isn't that big. It's more like the size of, like, this knife. Which I can imagine most Roy mains probably want to use to kill themselves after they realize their character sucks. Some of his attacks don't even match the animation that is executed by doing his move. Roy was slightly buffed in Smash 4, but honestly, one of the best things they did for him in that game is just make his animations match his already crappy hitboxes. This piled on with the fact that his weak moves make him incredibly susceptible to crouch cancelling. Seriously, you could just fucking duck in front of Roy and then just start hitting him, like that's- that's actually how you fight him, it's ridiculous. Now, a lot of people, including Zero, the number one ranked Smash 4 player in the world, believes him to be the worst character in the game. I personally agree with that. The Mii Sword Fighter has low kill power, very laggy attacks, and is surprisingly slow. Customs help him out, but seeing as how customs are banned, this isn't of much help. In fact, customs being banned resulted in the actual character himself being banned in almost every major Smash tournament. So the character himself has almost no results, with almost nobody playing the Mii Sword Fighter. Oh, wow. Now some of this stuff could be said about the other Mii Fighters, as they are also banned and also not that good without customs. But I put the Mii Sword Fighter on this list because out of the three Mii Fighters, he's the worst. Which is why he takes the fifth spot on this list. <sighs> oh 
Oy vey. It sucks that I gotta do this because I actually really like Bowser in Melee, but I gotta be true to the list. Now, Bowser is terrible in Brawl as well, and even less mobile in that game. But in Melee, he's ranked 25th, the second worst character in the entire game. Now, before we get to the cons that inevitably outweigh the pros, because how else would he be on this list, he has one of, if not the best ledge getup attacks in the entire game when he's below 100%. It comes out incredibly quickly, has great range and knockback that makes Bowser's getup very safe, and it travels very far for a getup attack. Not only that, but when the move is done, it retreats him back to the ledge, so even if the attack misses, Bowser is completely safe from anything. It's his best move. It's literally his best move. His ledge get up attack. How stupid. Bowser also has grounded up B out of shield, which is a fantastic combo breaker and lets Bowser move around quickly. But other than that, the character sucks. His mobility is awful. He's a fast faller, which combined with his large size makes him the most delicious and delectable combo food in the entire game, and he has one of the worst approaches in the game as well. What with his moves being incredibly laggy, his jump squat being one of the worst in the game, which means he has an awful short hop fast fall L cancel, and also results in it being hard to wave dash. Not even like you want to wave dash with this character because his wave dash sucks too. He has a crappy and predictable recovery and a terrible projectile that renders him completely immobile. There is only one other character in melee that is considered worse than Bowser, but we'll get to that later on the list. <laughs> I'm sorry, Calvin. I'm sorry, Calvin. Please let us still be friends after this. Please. I, I'm, I'm begging you. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cal. Jesus. Zelda holds the unique attribute of being the only character to be on this list twice, because she's just as bad, if not possibly worse in Brawl than in Smash 4. Let me try and put this into perspective for you. Take all of the bad things about Zelda that you know. Her slow speed, her tall height, and her lightweight. Now add Brawl's general speed and floaty gravity. Do those sound like mechanics that fit a character like Zelda well? Some would say yes, but honestly, it doesn't. The character is still just inherently bad, despite the different mechanics. Hopefully Zelda gets the buff she deserves one day, but until then, she unfortunately will have to fill this spot on the list. Kirby, 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 he has a good up air and back air, which are good for killing and edge guarding respectively, and his F and down tilts were good for spacing. And his throws are amazing, I mean look at them, they're suicide kills so if you land this by a ledge it's a guaranteed kill, right? Ideally, Kirby's forward and back throws would be amazing, possibly even the most redeeming part of the character. Except you can jump out. You can legitimately jump out of this character's throws. That is seriously the dumbest thing I have ever seen in Smash Brothers. Why would you make a character's throws mash outable? Seriously, the whole point of mashing out is to see if you can get out of the character's grab before they throw you, but the fact that you can get out of this character's throws while he's actually executing the throws, it makes them completely useless! And to top it off, this character's mobility and recovery are terrible, despite the fact that the character has five jumps. All these bad attributes earn him this spot on the list as one of the worst Super Smash Bros. characters in the history of the game. As for the worst... Where do I even begin with this? Um... The lack of movement options in Brawl and this game's floaty gravity and slower pace just completely takes its toll on Ganondorf in this game, as on the official tier list, Ganondorf is placed at 38th, making him the worst character in the entire game. He just... he... he, he sucks so much. But let me sit back, roll my sleeves up a little bit, and tell you why.
His frame data is but awful, being only slightly beaten and having the worst frame data to some of King Dedede's moves, yet that character is amazing. He has the third lowest jump height in the game, his down B no longer gave him an extra jump which made his recovery worse, his up B was nerfed harder than possibly any move in Smash history, only being able to kill past 300%. Yes, you heard me right, 300%. Fucking percent, and this is supposed to be one of the strongest characters in the entire game, yet he has a move that can't kill below 300%. His moves have large sour spots, the removal of L cancelling made it impossible to use his aerials with short hops because of how bad the landing lag was on them, his fucking forward air didn't kill anymore, his grab not only was painfully slow, but it had the shortest range of any grab in the entire game, his heavy weight makes him very susceptible to chain grabs and combos, most of his moves either have crappy hitboxes or terrible range, his shield is strangely small, making him easy to shield poke, which makes no sense for how you're supposed to play Ganon, and to put the icing on the cake with a fact that remains true in every Smash game, Ganon is in, he does not have a projectile, meaning he is easy as hell to camp out, especially in a game as defensive as Brawl can be. Any questions? And there you have it, folks, the top 10 worst Super Smash Bros. characters spread across all the Super Smash Bros. games. If you like this video, go ahead and let me know by leaving a like down below, commenting down below what your top 10 worst Super Smash Bros. characters are, and especially sharing the video around. That would mean the absolute world to me if you did that, and I would love you, and you'd get Nintunus love, and life would be good. Thank you all so much for watching, my name is Nintunus, and I will gladly see you next time. Ciao.